Hello, welcome to Chatter the Accountants Academy audio record audio recorded slides. My name is Nyasha Chakuma Makoni. I'll be taking you through the audio lecture today that is on group audits. Our learning outcomes are as follows. We want to be able to understand the key features of a group audit. How is it different from the or from the auditing that we've been used to when we're auditing standalone financial statements. We want to be able to describe the factors to consider before making use of the work of component auditors. Who are component auditors? That is also what we'll be covering. We also want to be able to design procedures to audit consolidated transactions, as well as to design audit procedures to audit consolidation worksheets. So let's jump in to the lecture. Our references for this lecture are your second semester modules, if you could go to study unit B, and ISA 600, the audit of group financial statements. So some of the key features of group audits are that when you're auditing a group audit, you audit consolidated financial statements, which is different from what we've been doing all along where we audit the standalone financial statements of a single entity, which could be an investment company with divisions uh, within that, that company. But now with your consolidated financial statements, we take you back to your FINAC, where you know that when you consolidate, it is a group, so it could have a subsidiary or more than one subsidiary. It could have um, other, uh, other investments, such as um, an investment in associate, so that can form a group. And so we'll be auditing the consolidated financial statements. With your group audits, you don't show investments but you show the subsidiaries or the associates that are consolidated into one entity through your IFRS 3 IS27 or through um, your IFRS 10. But with your standalone, when a company or when, a, when a, a holding company, let me say, acquires a subsidiary, they actually acquire shares in that subsidiary or in that company with the standalone. So with your standalone, it will be an investment and that's what you'll be auditing. As compared to the group where you actually consolidate the financial statements of a subsidiary or an associate and you combine them to, to produce one set of financial statements. Another key feature of group audits is that each subsidiary or component will have to be audited on its own and will define what a component is in the next slide. Whereas the auditor for, a, for a standalone financial statements will be auditing the financial statements of a single entity. So you find that with the group, we have single entities and then they're consolidated into one. So we will have those different audits, but at group level now, we will not be auditing the financial statements of the different entities, but we'll be, we'll be auditing the consolidated set of financial statements. Another key thing for group audits is that we do not have any ledger entries, but we've got a consolidation worksheet which combines everything into one. Whereas with your standalone entities, you've got your ledger entries. What are some of the important definitions? So some of the important definitions are a component. And what is a component? So a component is defined in ISA, in ISA 600. And um, a component is defined as an entity or a business activity for which the group or otherwise the component management prepare financial information to be included in the group financials. So a component could be your subsidiary, a component could be your associate. Then we've got what is called component materiality, which is the level that is determined by the group engagement team, which is relevant to that particular component. So component materiality, what is key is that it is not the component auditor, uh, the auditors of that component that determine uh, the component materiality, but it is the group auditors 
or the group engagement team that determine component materiality. A component auditor is the auditor who at least, sorry, at the request of the group engagement um, team performs work on financial information related to a particular component. And you find that your component management, uh, which is the next definition that we want to look at, um, your component management is the management that's responsible for the preparation of the financial information of that particular component. We've also got what is called the group-wide group -wide controls and those controls that are designed, implemented and maintained by group management over the group financial reporting. Then we've got what is called a significant component. Remember we defined component, but not all components will be defined as significant. So one that is defined as significant is identified by the group engagement team. And so the group engagement team decides that the individual uh, component is of significant, uh, is as an individual, is significant to the group audit. Or otherwise, they're saying due to the nature of the circumstances, it is likely to have significant risk of material misstatement of the group financial statements. So it could be a qualitative factor that is considered in coming up with the group component. So the significant component. Okay. So as you know that the ISA audit is a risk-based audit. And so we had risky areas that we looked at when we were auditing this, the standalone financial statements of entities. But now we want to look at what are some of the high risk or key risk areas of a group financial statements. So we've got things such as complex accounting issues. And these complex accounting issues come about as a result of, for example, the need to consolidate so the need for consolidation means sometimes we have to eliminate things like your unrealized profit, remember that, and we need to also eliminate intercompany or intergroup sales, intergroup purchases, which then leaves us sometimes with the unrealized profit that I just talked about. So those are some of your complex accounting issues, and those need to be dealt with at consolidation. If they're not dealt with appropriately, then it means that there's a significant risk that the financial statements of the group will not be uh, or will be materially misstated. We've also got some times or instances where we've got different reporting periods. So it is not always that when you have a group of companies um, or companies within a group, they all have the same reporting period. Some have a different reporting period. For example, some companies could have a, a reporting period of 31 December, which is the case in most Zimbabwean companies, but they could have a local or otherwise an international subsidiary, let's say in South Africa, which might have a different year end possibly of um, 31 March. And so when the need for consolidation now comes at year end, the group will need to report if the group reporting, um, if the group's uh, re reporting period ends at 31 December, then it means that they will need to then make sure that all companies will report as at 31 December. But if you look at a company that has a reporting period of 31 March, it means at 31 December, if the year was running from 1 January to 31 December, that would not be a full year. So certain adjustments will need to be made to that subsidiary so that the reporting period covers that full 12 months for that subsidiary. And it should be as at 31 December. So if those adjustments are not done appropriately, then the financial statements will probably be um, materially misstated. It is also the case that at times you've got different accounting policies within a group. As the example that I gave you earlier, where maybe the group, the holding company is in Zimbabwe and a subsidiary is in South Africa. You find that in Zimbabwe, if you're dealing with PPE, for example, the cost model 
might not be the model that fairly presents um, the PPE, but you might then need the revaluation model. Why? Because costs are constantly changing in, um, as is. But you find that with your with a subsidiary that is in South Africa, costs do not change as much and as rapidly. So you find that maybe they will prefer to use the cost model and not the revaluation model. Another area of high risk when you're dealing with your group financial statements is IFRS 3 issues, which is at the consolidation. You've got, uh, you've got things like goodwill that can arise. You've got things like gain on per gain purchase. You've got retained earnings, share capital, and all that. So you find that if those things are not catered for well at consolidation, then it could be a high risk area. Difference in accounting frameworks, whereby you've, you can possibly have different companies within a group. Some might be using a local gap of a different country that they, that they belong to, while the other companies could be using IFRS. So it means that consolidation, if the holding company and if the group reports in accordance with IFRS, then it means that those uh, financial statements that are reported using the, the local gap will need to be adjusted to IFRS. And so that process could as well be a high risk area. We've got our related party transactions, as I spoke earlier, which might need to be eliminated or which might need to be disclosed in accordance with IS24, um, where you disclose the, the, the subsidiaries or the associates as part of your disclosures. That might not be done in accordance with IFRS, so that's also a high risk area. The control environment, as you always say, that when once you've got or whenever you've got different components or different subsidiaries or, or different um, uh, divisions within a group you will most likely face differences in the control environment so that then also is a high risk area as it can also increase the risk of the control risk of the group financial statements What uh, is the role of component auditors? So you find that the component auditors should perform audit, uh, the audit of the financial statements of the standalone components financial statements. So they audit the financial statements of a component. And so they are the ones that are responsible for issuing the, 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 the opinion or the audit report for that particular component. However, now at group level, the group auditors do not necessarily have to re-audit the component or re-audit the financial statements of the component. They then take the, fin the audited financial statements and then they audit the consolidation process where the, the financial statements that were audited by the component were then consolidated into the group. So, there are some key issues, however, that need to be considered before the group auditor can rely on the work of the component auditors. And so these are some of your, the, the normal issues that are always used before relying on the components, um, on the component auditors, sorry, on any auditor's financial statements. So one important thing is what is the ethical standing, the ethical behavior of the component auditor? If it's a good, uh, if they've got, if it has been assessed as a good ethical behavior, then that supports that we can rely as the group auditors on the financial statements of the component. You could also have independence that you're going to consider, where you're saying if the component auditor is independent of the component management and the component itself, then again, that's a plus, you can rely on their work. You also consider the competences and capabilities of the component auditor. Are they adequately qualified? Are they adequately experienced to be auditing a component uh, such as the component that needs to be consolidated? Another important area or issue to focus on is that did the component auditors perform the audit, uh, the audit appropriately? So you might also want to know how they or how they are going to 
perform the audit. If it's in accordance with ISIS, then that's saying that highly likely then they performed the audit appropriately. The auditor, the group auditors will also need to communicate significant issues with the component auditors. So some of those significant issues are what is the component's materiality? What are the reporting deadlines? What are some of the key risky areas that the, com the group auditors might want to highlight to the component uh, auditors? Maybe areas such as uh, who are their related parties, they're rela looking out for related party transactions. Those are some of the key or significant issues that the group auditor might want to communicate to the component auditors. So you find that you have a consolidation worksheet and that consolidation worksheet um, includes all the subsidiaries that need to be consolidated, all the associates that need to be consolidated. And so there are certain adjustments that are actually done at consolidation. And so some of those adjustments, if these adjustments are not done, then the financial statements of the group will be materially misstated. And those are such as the at acquisition uh, adjustments that need to be made. If there was a step acquisition, what adjustments need to be made? Was there a change in, in control, in degree of control? And therefore, maybe um, you need to consolidate more than you were consolidating, or you need to um, allocate to NCI more than you were allocating in the past. Or maybe you can no longer um, consolidate if there's a change in degree of control. Uh, what about your group related party transactions? Have they been appropriately eliminated? Things like goodwill. A group connect cannot have goodwill in itself. So you find that what will then happen to the goodwill? Fair value adjustments post acquisition. For example, where uh, one particular company's head office is an investment company of so is an investment an i sporty um, investment of another where the other is looking at it and measuring it at fair value while the other is measuring it at as as ppe so what exactly is it to the group so it will be ppe it will not be an investment and so maybe some of those fair value adjustments that were taken into account by one entity that owns that particular building might need to be adjusted for You've also got instances where you might have foreign subsidiaries and you know that FCTR will arise and what will be those adjustments that need to be made. So you find that I have referred to the consolidation worksheet before and um, the steps that are taken or that should be taken in auditing um, a consolidation worksheet. These you will find in your study notes and refer to your notes or to your modules in study unit B for more detail. We've also got reporting obligations as the group auditors. And so you find that the group auditors are responsible for issuing an opinion on the consolidated financial statements. Remember the standalone financial statements, their audit opinions were issued by um, by the component auditors. But when it comes to the consolidated financial statements, that is the responsibility of the group auditors. And in the report, they will not make reference to the fact that they relied on the work of component auditors. They will then report as though they were just the auditors. Because why they should have done a thorough check on the component auditors and once they can rely on their work if they conclude that and they've consolidated the financial statements into one they cannot then say no uh, these particular financial statements were audited by so and so as component auditors that is not permitted however it is also key as well to note to note that just because a component might have a modified audit opinion it does not necessarily mean automatically that the group's financial statements are going to be uh, more that the group audit opinion will be modified it is not always the case so what are the next steps going forward the next steps uh, please can you go to your modules read course notes on group audits 
attempt the online quiz on group audits also attempt the practice question at the end of study unit b as well as the more integrated uh, more integrated questions on audited um, on group audits where you've identified issues that you might be struggling with when attempting those questions please could you bring those questions to your next physical contact session so it could be to class or it could be you booking a consultation with one of the lecturers in the auditing department you could also bring questions to us and um, those questions could be um, sent to the auditing department email uh, or you could copy to Nyasha Davidzo or Leonard so that is all from me for today thank you very much <music>